Sky Tonight, April 17th, 2018. Hi friends, I'm Dr. James Daly of Astronomy for Change, and welcome to the Sky Tonight for Tuesday, April 17th. This is the first installment of what will be a weekly tour of our nighttime sky, and we hope you will enjoy it as much as we did in producing it for you. In each of our weekly excursions to the great canopy above, since the sky slowly changes each day, We'll point out and describe what's new and noteworthy for the evening, paying particular attention to the planets, the phase of the moon, and the prominent constellations, and what you can expect to see, even if all you have is just your own eyes or a modest pair of binoculars. So let's begin. If we cast our gaze over to the west, we notice brilliant Venus following the sun as it sets. Zooming in on Venus, we note its phase approaching what could be described as waxing gibbous, in much the same way, way we would describe our own moon in a similar phase during its monthly cycle. The phases of Venus were first observed by Galileo over 400 years ago, providing empirical evidence for the heliocentric model of the solar system, first proposed by Copernicus almost 100 years earlier. This observation presented quite a conundrum for those who continued to adhere to a geocentric or Earth-centered model. The only way Venus can appear to go through phases is if it were closer to the sun as it is, and if the sun were at the center. Make sure you have a clear view of the western sky, otherwise you could miss Venus. It is so bright at times it is often referred to as either an evening star, as it is now, or as a morning star rising before the sun in the early morning hours. Notice the very thin waxing crescent or young moon just east of brilliant Venus. With each passing day and night, as the days go by and the seasons change, the sky slowly changes with the seasons, and thus, we are at the beginning of spring once again. If we look to the east of Venus, we take note of the beautiful Pleiades, the Seven Sisters, an open cluster of bright young stars in Taurus the Bull. With a pair of binoculars, the cluster takes on a whole new look, and under dark skies, a thin misty veil can be seen very gas and dust left over from the star's formation. Taurus is famously marked by a giant V, seen here pointing towards the west with the red giant star Aldebaran, the right eye of the bull. Starting at the apex of the V, passing through Aldebaran to the east, we stop at the tip of the bull's right horn, the region of the sky containing the famous Crab Nebula, the remnant of a high-mass star that ended its life in spectacular fashion as a supernova. Appearing in the sky on July 4, 1054, it was first observed by Chinese astronomers and remained visible during daylight hours for several weeks and to the unaided eye for about two years after its first observation. Taurus is a prominent winter constellation and, since spring is upon us, we note that it is high in the west at twilight with Orion, the mighty centurion, and another winter constellation further to the east. It's striking the number of bright stars visible in this part of the sky. Orion is marked out by the glittering sapphire Betelgeuse, his right shoulder, and a red supergiant star that is expected to explode very soon in a spectacular supernova. His left shoulder is marked by Bellatrix here, and his knees marked by the brilliant blue-white jewel Rigel, another supernova candidate, and the star Saif. If we gaze a bit north, we immediately note the three belt stars of Orion. 
Orion is also home to the famous stellar nursery and favorite of amateur and professional astronomers alike, the Great Nebula in Orion, seen here in an expanded view and now through a moderately large amateur telescope. Returning to the belt and drawing a line due east takes us directly to the brightest star in the sky, Sirius, the dog star, and the head of Orion's faithful celestial companion, Canis Major, the great dog, seen standing upright and facing him. Another favorite and a great target for binoculars is the beautiful open cluster of stars, Messier 41. Seen here through a moderately large amateur telescope, its stars are similar in age and composition to the Pleiades mentioned earlier. Well, that's it for now, folks. Please check back next week for the next installment of The Sky Tonight.